Hello, welcome to my channel, Learn English in Easy Way. To improve your English skills, reading, listening, understanding and speaking in accordance with your level, I combine short stories in one video. Improve your English with audio stories, A1, A2. You will also have more videos on other levels and subjects later. Let's start. Going for gold. Gold was probably first found on the ground and used by prehistoric men in tool making. In ancient times, it was made into plates, cups, vases and vessels of all kinds, and of course, jewelry. The first use of gold as money occurred in Anatolia in 670 BC, but it has always been accepted as money anywhere in the world. Sailors, for example, wore a gold earring. If they were shipwrecked, they could exchange it to get home again. Gold is still given to military pilots for the same reason. People have always been fascinated by gold. How many times have people killed others and how many lives have been lost for it? The gold of the Paros was stolen from their tombs in the pyramids. The Inca and Aztec empires were destroyed for gold. Later in history, hundreds of men from other civilizations died in the jungles of South America as they searched for the golden city of El Dorado. In 1849, thousands of people left their homes to join the California gold rush. Many were killed by Indians and diseases such as cholera, tuberculosis, chickenpox and the black death. Pure gold is rare both in nature and in manufacturing. It is usually mixed with other metals. The proportion of gold is shown in carats. If the carat number is high, this means there is more gold but fewer other metals in it. Pure gold is 24 carat and the cheapest is 9 carat. The word carat comes from the Greek word keration, which means a carob seed. These seeds were used to weigh all gold and diamonds. Most gold today is found in South Africa, 612 tons a year, and North America, 459 tons a year. About 83% of it is used for jewelry. Of the rest, about 9% is used by industry, about 6% is used for coins, and 2% is made into gold teeth. Gold is usually found in very small pieces or nuggets. The largest nugget, the Halterman nugget, was found in 1872 in Australia. Its weight was 214 kilograms. The largest reserves of gold are held in the USA, in the Federal Reserve Bank and at Fort Knox. The second biggest stores are held by the Bank of England and the Bank of France. Not all of this gold belongs to the governments of these countries. A lot of it is owned by companies, other governments and individuals. When gold is bought and sold, it is not usually moved. Only the names on a piece of paper are changed. The gold itself stays in the bank. Today, gold is still the most important and valuable metal and man has used it in many different fields. For example, in the 1920s, doctors in France started using gold to treat a disease called ferritimote artesis. In the 1960s, scientists used gold-coated mirrors to maximize infrared reflection. In the 1980s, car manufacturers used gold for the metal parts of airbags. 
future cities in the sea. In some coastal countries where there is not enough land for an increasing population, living space can expand into the sea. For example, the land area of Hong Kong is small but the population is large. Therefore, many of the city's poor are unable to find affordable homes in the city itself. They dwell in boats that are tied close to each other by the shore. Such floating towns have given new ideas to a number of architects from different countries. These architects are working on several futuristic designs for oceanic cities. One of these designs by Eckhart Schulles Phillips is a huge city called New Venice. It will be built on floating containers. The idea of floating cities has attracted special attention in Japan, which has an enormous population density. Like Schulz Phillips, the Japanese architect Kyonori Kikuyata has also suggested floating containers in his design of a small town called Onabara Ocean. Another Japanese architect, Hidezo Kobayashi, has proposed building a city, actually a safer one, in a bay which will extend an ex existing city from the shore into the ocean. It will use both structures that, flat, that float and structures that are securely tied to the bottom. Boats will pass over and around this city and waves and tides will provide its energy. Kobayashi city will also be a base for taking out mineral deposits that lie on the ocean floor. The Beetle, a legend on wheels. One of Hitler's dreams was to increase the number of car owners in Germany. So he employed Dr. Ferdinand Porsche, the well-known constructor, to design an affordable and reliable car for the people. Heider and Porsche often had arguments, but Porsche was afraid of him. So he stayed in the project and continued his works in the Wolfsburg car factory. In 1938, the factory produced the first cheap car for the people. It included all the characteristics that Hitler ordered. The engine was at the back of the car and it had quite a specific shape. It was very round and it looked like an insect. That was the reason why it was called Beetle. During World War II, the Germans used the Wolfsburg car factory to make all-terrain cars, cobalt wagons, and airplanes for the army. However, as soon as the war ended, Beetle production started again and the Beetle immediately became even more popular than Ford's Model T. T. The great success started with the import of Beetles to Holland in 1947. By 1972, the total number of Beetle cars produced had increased to over 15 million, then sales started to go down because the Beetle was still a 1940s design. Although there were some small changes in the engine, in the end, the Beetle lost the war against technology. In 1974, the new Golf model replaced the Beetle in the Wolfsburg car factory. The car designers decided to make a car completely different from their original Beetle model. In 1975, Volkswagen introduced this new Golf in the United States, where it was called the Rabbit. Over the years, the Germans produced many models of Volkswagens, using the Beetle and Golf as a starting point and including many other concepts and standards. These were produced in Emden, Osnaburg, Wolfsburg and other German cities. Today, many people say that Volkswagens are among the most comfortable and powerful cars in Europe. The production of the Beetle in Germany ended in 1978. However, in the early 1980s, there were still millions of Beetles on the road. People formed Beetle clubs all around the world thinking that it would never disappear. Around 1990, there were fewer Beetles on the road. Today, it is almost impossible to see the Beetle 
in the streets, but the owners of the few remaining Beetle models still try to keep their small cars in the best possible condition. They enjoy driving the Beetle because it has a history behind it. This makes it very special for them. Mirrors Mirrors have always been considered as having special powers. The superstition that breaking a mirror is bad luck is very, very old. This belief can be served, observed in some form in most cultures around the world, but in fact the first mirrors could not really be broken because they were made of water. People looked at themselves in lakes, ponds and rivers because they believed that by looking at their reflection in the water, they could learn about their future. In the water was calm and reflection was clear. This was considered a good sign meaning that good things would happen to the person. On the other hand, if the water was rough, i.e. not calm, and the reflection was distorted and hard to see, this was a sign that the future would be bad. In the first century BC, the Romans used to read water fortunes. You could go to see a person with special powers and have him or her tell you what your future would be. The seer would ask you to hold a bowl of water and look into it and then he or she would study your reflection and tell you what was going to happen to you. If you drop the ball, it meant that you had no future, a very bad sign. Ancient people had the idea that a person's reflection was actually the person's soul and that the soul existed outside the body in the reflection. Therefore, if the mirror broke or the water bowl was dropped, it meant that the soul would be destroyed and the person would soon die. In many cultures, people believed that it was dangerous for a person to look at his or her own image too long. This was because they believed the soul in the reflected image could pull the life out of the person. Similarly, the Bositos, a Bantu tribe in South Africa, believed that crocodiles could direct a person's reflection underwater and kill it. In the 6th century BC, the Romans changed their ideas about mirror fortunes a little. At this time, they believed that a person's health and fortune changed every 7 years. Therefore, if you broke a mirror, it was not quite as bad as before. You would have seen, you would have 7 years of bad health and general bad luck, but at least you probably wouldn't die. However, Chinese people believe that a well-placed mirror could protect you from evil. This was because they thought bad spirits would be frightened by their own image in the mirror and would then leave people alone. There is an ancient Chinese saying, when evil recognizes itself, it destroys itself. Therefore, brass mirrors were often placed in the bedrooms to scare evil spirits. They were supposed to protect people while they were sleeping. An unusual style. Leonardo da Vinci was one of the most interesting characters of the Italian Renaissance. He wrote in Italian using a special kind of shorthand that he invented himself. People who study his notebooks have long been puzzled by something else, however. He usually used mirror writing starting at the right side of the page and moving to the left. Not only did Leonardo write in mirror image script from right to left, but he used strange spellings and abbreviations and his notes were not arranged in any logical order. 
He only wrote in the normal direction when he was writing something intended for other people. People who were contemporaries of Leonardo left records saying that they saw him write and paint left-handed. He also made sketches showing his own left hand at work. Being left-handed was highly unusual in Leonardo's time. Because people were superstitious, children who naturally started using their left hands to write and draw were forced to use their right hands. No one knows why Leonardo used mirror writing, though several possibilities have been suggested. Some believe that he was trying to make it harder for people to read his notes and steal his ideas. Others think that he was hiding his scientific ideas from the powerful Roman Catholic Church, whose teachings sometimes disagreed with what Leonardo observed. Another possibility is that writing from left to right was messy because the ink just put down would spread as his hand moved across it. Therefore, Leonardo chose to write in reverse because it prevented smudging. Over 4,000 pages of Leonardo's scientific and technical observations in his handwritten manuscripts have survived. It seems that Leonardo planned to publish them as a great encyclopedia of knowledge, but like many of his projects, this one was never finished. After his death, his notes were scattered among libraries and collections all over Europe, while Leonardo's technical treatises on painting were published as early as 1651. Most of his scientific work remained unknown until the 19th century. If you liked the video, please hit a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day.